Hello everyone, I'm Richard Lewis from uh, Sony Europe and today I'm going to uh, show you around the new uh, F55 uh, 4K camera. So we have one here, this is kind of uh, fully built and I'm going to show you all the bits and pieces that go uh, to make up the complete system. So you can see first of all here we have this is the new uh, viewfinder. So this will flip up uh, both that way and it flips up that way as well. That's quite convenient. This is the uh, LCD viewfinder. Uh, we don't have an OLED uh, one uh, with us today that you've heard about, I'm sure, but that will be uh, coming along soon. So I'd like to show you how to make up the, uh, the system and uh, what are the component parts. So here is a, another body. Okay, so that is the, uh, the, the basic body itself with the handle attached. Of course, the handle is detachable as well. So as you can see, it makes it a very small, compact unit. Over on this one, you can see we actually have a plate at the bottom here. This is just to adjust uh, the height to get the optical axis correct when you're fitting map boxes and things. So just to show you the basic uh, system as it, as it is, you can see here, uh, round on the back, this is a, a connector which we're going to use in a minute for the external recorder. And you can see I already have uh, four pin XLR power in. So this is the smallest configuration that you can make. Uh, that is uh, with recording on the S, S by S card, so the S by S card slot is, is here and uh, that can take two cards. To show you the new card, this is the new uh, S by S uh, card, this is S by S Pro Plus card. It's considerably faster at writing and allows us to record uh, SSTP uh, files, that's HDCAM SR quality. Okay, continuing on around the body, you can see we have the display here. Uh, and then the, the various control buttons and we'll be having a closer look at those uh, in a while. And the front here, you can see we've got the PL uh, mount adapter uh, already installed on the camera. Looking around the side here, obviously the tape measure for the focus puller, very important. This is the new viewfinder interface, this is a new digital interface. And this is the LCD viewfinder and you can see it's a completely new type of uh, interface uh, connection. Uh, to the camera. Then further on round, this is the audio input box and in fact this box is removable. So if you don't want it there are four screws, two there and two underneath and then you can remove the box uh, so you can slim down the camera even further. The normal connections here that you would expect, these are time code uh, in and out connections and then we have the main uh, HDSDI outputs. Uh, so there are in fact four outputs, uh, main and sub. Uh, there is a mode where you can uh, get, actually get real-time real, real -time 4K out through four times, that's these four, 3G signals to a 4K monitor. Okay, so what are the component, other component parts? So the first one uh, is a battery mounting adapter. Okay, that's this little guy here. So you can see how it works. We have a, a little handle on top and you can see it moving in and out, I hope. Okay, so very simply that just slots on there and then I just close it like that. And now I have the battery interface here, the VSHU interface. I have, again, external uh, 12 volt input and I have uh, two uh, 1.8 amp 12 volt output connectors. Those are here. Okay, so this is the, the simplest uh, configuration for operating with a battery. I'll show you how the battery fits. This is the new, uh, ba new battery system using the uh, olivine uh, crystals. So this has the uh, considerable benefit uh, that actually the, the life of the battery will be about twice that of an existing battery. The, the new uh, crystal structure inside produces much less heat, so it's much more efficient. It also allows us, when we put it on the new charger, to charge it uh, twice the speed. So I can charge this battery on a normal battery charger that would take about 150 minutes. On the new battery charger that will only take 70 minutes. And that is, this battery is good for supplying the whole system for um, about an hour or just over an hour. Okay, so that very simply uh, slots on like that. And now we have our uh, basic configuration with battery. We'll put on the viewfinder. This is a new type of uh, viewfinder uh, mounting bracket. This bracket here is exactly the same as the one we use, for example, on the F65. And that just slots around here. Let me just plug that into the viewfinder connector there. So you can move this in 
lots of different angles, so it's very flexible the way you actually want to put the viewfinder itself. Okay, so that's our basic uh, configuration using a battery. Uh, and now the last part of the uh, component is the R5. So this is the R5 recorder. So this is the new uh, RAW recorder. Just to look at that for a moment, you can see on the side here we have uh, a, a HDSDI out, so we're actually able to monitor playback from the card. It has another 12 volt input and it has a 12 volt 2 amp output as well, so there are outputs everywhere. So we'll just slot that in, take off the battery, take off this guy. Okay, so we're back to our raw camera. Let me just uh, open the slot on this one. Make sure that the slot's on there. Okay, now we've got the basic raw uh, recorder configuration, the battery on the back, and now we have the complete raw camera system. Okay, this is the card slot. Here is the new card. This is the AXS memory card. Okay, it's uh, the same width and the same depth as the SR memory, but as you can see, it's a little bit shorter by about uh, an inch or so. Okay, so this is uh, rated at uh, 2.4 gigabits per second, so this is that's why it's called an S24, so the naming configuration is the same as SR memory. And that just very simply slots in there and then you close the door. Okay, so this is our complete uh, system. The last thing to do is to put in the uh, S by S code because then we can do dual recording. And you'll notice that this door here, when, it, when you open the door, the door folds down inside the camera body so you won't snap it off. Okay, so we can just put the card in. So now we have a raw recorder card in, we have an S by S because remember, the F55 can do dual recording, so you can record your RAW and, and record your proxy uh, all at the same time. Okay, so that's our camera ready to go. Moving on to uh, the actual, uh, this is actual uh, fully working system and we'll show you some uh, RAW recording uh, shortly. So you can see on the, on the screen here, you can see the, the basic configuration and, and you've got six buttons. Uh, and these control uh, different functions according to the uh, actual layout you're requesting. So we're now in the camera menu. So I can look at a, a view menu. And if I press twice, yeah, then I can see uh, that I have up, down, left and right. Uh, and this is for controlling the menu system in the camera. And if you just press it once, then this is the playback. So we can uh, playback the existing files that we've recorded and we can fast forward, rewind, and also have uh, thumbnail views as well. Okay, back to the camera system. So this, this, this camera is now set up uh, to record RAW. The basic sensitivity in the Cine EI mode is uh, ISO 1600. So that's its uh, base sensitivity, and when you're recording in RAW mode, uh, that sensitivity is fixed. You can also see that we're now monitoring in S-Log2 gamma, so I can see the whole dynamic range in the viewfinder and the HDSDI outputs. So other menus we have, uh, not all of them work at the moment as this is very much a, a prototype camera. We have a file system and we have a time code control system. And you also have uh, additional buttons here, so we have a cancel and back button. We have a rotary encoder for controlling a menu system. We have a menu button itself. Uh, we have option buttons, we have status buttons and uh, brightness buttons. In addition, we have some uh, USB uh, interfaces and an SD card slot. Okay, so the SD card slot is for storing uh, setups and uh, that type of thing in the usual way. Slot select A and B, because as I said, there are two slots here. And some assignable buttons uh, here, three assignable buttons there. And <coughs> a fourth assignable button uh, round on this side of the camera. Okay, so you can see it's quite, if you look at it uh, front on, it's really quite uh, quite slender, it's uh, not, not too heavy. This is, the, this is actually a lens from the F3, this is not the uh, new design of lens. Uh, we don't have any available right now, but uh, I just put that on so that you can actually see a picture on the monitor there from the camera, so you can see that it's, um, this camera is actually fully functional. So, round at the front here, we have the uh, neutral density filter, so we have two built-in neutral density filters. 
we have a 0.9, so that's three stops, and we have a 1.8, which is a six stop filter. Okay, so those are manually controlled, uh, but they're quite uh, quite useful to have installed uh, as a standard uh, standard feature. Okay, so to show you an example of how this works, so I can adjust the colour temperature. So I just select the colour temperature button, and then I can just uh, scroll up and down. So that's four three, for example. Okay, and then I just uh, I can just take that colour temperature. So it's really, really easy uh, to adjust many of the master settings, and the same with the uh, shutter button. Yeah. So I can select different shutters here. Okay, so the basic menu operation is, uh, is very simple and straightforward. So to uh, look at the uh, menu system in the, the camera, so I'll lift that up so that you can look into the viewfinder. Okay, so first of all I press the menu button, so now you can see the menu uh, has appeared in the, in the viewfinder. Now if I press the view button twice here, I now have the up, down, left and right controls in addition to the rotary control, so I can adjust the menu very simply go down to this option here and I can just uh, go right and left and I can bring the menu back and forward so it's up down left and right so it's a very simple straightforward control and that's menu off and then back to normal shooting mode okay as, as you know this camera can record um, many different uh, formats with the new codec so one of which of course is the standard MPEG-2 50 megabit which is uh, pretty much going to be the uh, offline uh, recording format I guess for, for many people it also supports the new format on the SBIS card of uh, XAVC, and you can select that by going to the, this viewfinder menu here, and then uh, we're checking the uh, XAVC recording, and if I look here, then you can see I can select XAVC 2K uh, and 4K, or the MPEG-2 recording, so it's very simple to change the uh, recording format, and you can see on the front of the screen here, it shows you what recording format uh, we are currently in. Okay. Of course, the RAW recorder always records 4K, uh, so this is only controlling the format recorded on the S by S card here. So we recommend uh, a, a standard S by S card, which you can use for MPEG-2, but any of the XAVC formats uh, should use the new Pro Plus card. So to set up uh, the Cine EI mode, which is uh, available in this camera, we just go to the uh, system uh, setup here. So you can see that it's now currently set for uh, custom. So if we want to choose that, we press the set button. And now I can choose uh, Cine EI mode. And I press set. Okay, and then that's going to go to format. So, okay, so we're, we're now in the uh, Cine EI mode, and the gain has been set to 1600 ISO. So we're now in uh, full operation, so if I go back to the camera system, now you can see here on the screen we have exposure index 1600 EI and we have uh, S-Log2 Gamma which we're using uh, for monitoring. So here we've uh, changed the configuration to uh, just shooting on uh, the S by S card and uh, we've recorded a few shots in here uh, onto the Pro Plus card and so we can see what we've been doing by just checking the uh, thumbnail button so this is a very useful way of uh, finding out uh, your clips and looking at the clips and playing them back. Okay, so now we've done the, uh, looked at the camera and uh, done a few basic recordings. So what happens to the workflow after that? Well, for the S by S card, we have the new uh, US20 reader. Okay, so the great benefit of this guy, it's a single card slot. So one card goes in, very simply into, into that. It has a USB 3 interface. You'll notice the connector is blue, those of you that know. This is a USB 3 cable, so this very simply plugs into there, and then we can plug that into our uh, laptop. So the great benefit of this is it's USB 3, and it is also powered by the bus, so you no longer need to have the external power supply, which you need for the US 10. Okay, so now we come to the uh, raw recording part, and we'll see how that's handled. This is the new AXS CR1 card reader. Uh, again, this has a USB 3 on, on the back. We have the USB 3 uh, blue interface. This one does require an external 12 volt power supply. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to hook it up to our uh, laptop. Plug that in there. 
get the power, plug in power. Okay, so card reader is now ready for ingest. So we're going to take the AXS uh, memory card, so this guy here. Okay, and then we're going to put that into the uh, slot, into the R5. That's recorded. Okay, so that's now uh, loaded successfully into the into the R5. So now we're going to make a recording on the AXS card. Okay, so that's uh, recording. Uh, just a small clip. Okay, so now uh, I've, we've connected the monitor cable to the uh, video out on the R5. Yeah. So now we can uh, select the clip and uh, play that back. You can see on the monitor here. Yeah, it's playing back from the uh, AXS card. Now we'll uh, take the card out. And we'll put it into the reader. We have a look at our disk here. Click on title, Cine Root. Okay, and we can now see our clips in here. So these are the clips that we've stored. So we have them up on the screen here. And I can look at the metadata. So this is the, all of the metadata that we've uh, recorded on the card. And on the main screen here, I can now play this clip. And that's playing at uh, our speed. So if we choose to, to zoom in on that. Okay, so we can have a look at, uh, for example, this area here. And now you can see as I increase the, I increase the resolution. Here, you can see the quality of the, the image in the high resolution. And over on this side here, then we can control the white switch. So this is the white balance that is coming from the metadata. And I have basic sensitivity controls here and a few other basic features I can control. Uh, and then down at the bottom, I can export this as a, a DPX file in either HD or 4K resolution. Okay, so that's uh, shown you the uh, raw ingest and that's uh, now working with our uh, viewer. It's uh, not quite finished yet, but uh, we have a little time to go. So just to summarize uh, on the camera, so you've seen the uh, recording on the new uh, SBIS Pro Plus card. So this is, uh, will be available uh, at launch with the camera. We've done some recording on the new AXS uh, memory card. Uh, this is raw recording that we've done, and I've shown you how that uh, ingests properly. And we've done some XAVC recording, and the key thing to remember for XAVC is, one is the quality is very, very high. It's the highest amongst uh, any H.264 coding schemes, uh, and it's very, very suitable not only for 4K, but also for high-speed 2K and HD recording. So this is a key summary of the product and I hope you enjoyed it.